In a predictable feat of mental gymnastics, Fox propagandists are denying the fact that Republicans in Florida are mandating that students be taught the benefits of slavery while simultaneously defending that proposition. Intrigued? Then click that like, subscribe, and the alert bell, and maybe check out my Patreon and enjoy the video. So after everything that's happened in modern times pertaining to the Fox Propaganda Network, you would think that they have, they've reached the bottom. They have finally scratched the bottom in terms of the depths of their hypocrisy, of their lack of intellectual rigor, and the disgusting lows to which they would go. Except actually, that's not the case. Even in the post-Tucker Carlson Fox News, they still find a way to be disgusting and hypocritical and to contradict themselves pretty nakedly in a span of, let's say, 20 seconds. So this pertains to the recent mandate by the Florida Board of Education, Republicans, that students in Florida schools be taught that enslaved people benefited from slavery. Okay, that's the context for this. Highly controversial. We've done a video or two about it before. So this is what Jesse Waters on the Fox Propaganda Network has to say. And we're going to play another clip after. No one is arguing slaves benefited from slavery. No one is saying that. It's not true. They're teaching how black people developed skills during slavery in some instances that could be applied for their own personal benefit. So did you hear that? They are not teaching that slavery was beneficial in any way. It's not true. It's wrong. What they're teaching is that slavery was beneficial sometimes. They're mutually exclusive ideas. These two ideas cannot coexist. They are mutually exclusive. They exist in, in diametric opposition. Either Florida is mandating that students be taught that enslaved people benefited even occasionally from their slavery, or they're not. One of the two. But the contradictions don't stop there. So I also want to point out, um, in terms of the defense that Fox is offering for this, this is uh, Jesse Waters' co-host Greg Gutfeld, and this will probably appear in another video that we're going to do because there's just so much to this this scandal and the story, and it interweaves, you know, history and the notions about slavery. And Vice President Harris has given a speech about it. We're going to do a video about that. And Fox has so much to say about all of this. So this clip may be seen again, but I want to play you this part in which Greg Gutfeld, Jesse Waters' Fox propagandist co-host on The Five, uh, what he has to say about this. This is not a real story at all. This was completely made up. It was snippet journalism. Once again, she took one piece out of a huge thing and turned it into some kind of screed against racism and all. So Fox News, the Fox Propaganda Network, is looking its audience dead in the face and saying, this isn't a real story. This is made up. It's not real. Okay, it's kind of real, but it's taking one snippet out of a bigger picture and wildly blowing it out of proportion. The Fox Propaganda Network is excoriating Vice President Harris and progressives and Democrats for blowing something out of proportion because it's just a part of a greater thing. The Fox Propaganda, the same propaganda network that complained about President Obama's tan suit and President Biden's footwear and every sort of niche, ridiculous, insubstantial you know, piece of trivia in the history of civilization that they can weaponize against the left, this network is complaining that, hey— you're taking the small thing, which I just denied existed, but now I acknowledge it exists and it's real, but it shouldn't be as big of a deal as what you're making it. The Fox Propaganda Network is saying that. Very interesting. So to Jesse Waters and to Greg Gutfeld, I'm just simply going to point this out. This is part of the 216-page document issued by the Republican-led Florida Department of Education. And you see right here, very early on, I think it's like page six, they stipulate, they mandate that instruction includes how slaves develop skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. That is part of the Republican uh, Board of Education in Florida, their mandates, their standards for social studies to be taught in their state in 2023. Now, that's, so it's a fact. It's in that curriculum. It's in those guidelines. It is stipulated. You have to teach that slaves benefited or developed skills which could be applied for their personal benefit, i.e., that slavery was beneficial, at least at times. That's their position. And by the way, nobody made the Florida Department of Education take this position. This is them being hoisted by their own batard. This is their racism and their deep desire to sanitize, 
U.S. history and the conservative program that was slavery, and it was propagated by conservatives, they want to sanitize it. Nobody's asking them to do this. Nobody's forcing them to do this. Once upon a time, it was kind of the norm politically 10, 20 years ago to just widely condemn slavery and not try to whitewash it or sanitize it or find the silver lining in it. But now Republicans feel the need to do that because in some ways, the cultural tastes of the Republican Party have become more regressive in some ways than they were 10, 20 years ago. The only other thing I want to say is this. History is not unabridged in, in terms of how it's taught to students, okay? Think about it. There are minutes and seconds and hours and days and years and decades. History is occurring all the time. There's no way to convey that while history is simultaneously occurring now. There's no way to give that in a school semester to middle school students. So what do you do? What have we always done when it comes to teaching history? We've only ever taught abridged history. What's that mean? We condense history. We squeeze it. We give you the cliff notes. We give you the top line moments, be it World War II or the Civil War, the Revolutionary War, or you know the ancient disputes of Greece and Sparta and everything in between, the Bay of Pigs, everything. I mean, everything that's happened. We give you a condensed version because that's all that we can teach. That's all we have the time for, especially when we're also trying to teach math and science and English and everything else, language arts. So what that means is teachers and administrators Pick the things they choose to discuss. So even if your position, because you may be watching and you may be going, well, I think it is a fact. I mean, my God, you know, a slave might have learned a thing or two that once they were freed, if they survived slavery, that uh, then, then, then they there could have applied in their own lives. Even if that's your position and you generally believe that, genuinely believe that, that that's a fact, why, given the tens of millions of facts that we could potentially teach, in a social studies class, why would you mandate that that be a fact to teach? Why that fact? Even if you accept that it is a fact, and the, the, the fact of the matter is, you can't actually come up with a good reason other than to sanitize slavery and to whitewash U.S. history. That's the only cogent reason that you could come up with why this particular fact, if that's what you believe it is, needs to be taught. So the bottom line is Republicans lose this argument. You all just lose. You lose every single time. All roads lead to your defeat, which is why this is hurting the GOP so bad and why Democrats and progressives need to relentlessly hit this wound, this self-inflicted wound created by Republicans until they beg for mercy politically, until they say, you know what? Oh, my God, I can't believe that for a moment we ever wanted to teach this or mandate that this be taught to students, how disgusting, how revisionist, how racist, we apologize, uh, and we will do better. Until they say that, then this needs to continuously be hit and harped on by progressives everywhere.